Now, 93% of the population will be getting a fibre broadband service when the NBN rollout completes, which means that 7% of the population will not. Instead, they'll be receiving either a wireless broadband service or a satellite broadband service through the NBN. In this video, I'll talk about the wireless broadband service. And I want to start by talking about some of the general characteristics of wireless broadband. In particular, I want to address the question which often comes up, and that is, why don't we just use wireless broadband for everything and not worry about this fibre technology? Well, I want to address that one. And we'll start by introducing some of the basic characteristics of wireless broadband or mobile broadband. And what we see in this diagram is a user on the left-hand side and then a base station. And these, you've all seen base stations. They, they're either on towers or sometimes attached uh, to a building with a, a wireless uh, signal uh, connecting to the user. Then the base station has a backhaul link. And in earlier videos, we talked about a backhaul, which then connects to the internet. And this is very simplified, but shows the basic idea. And indeed, with new technologies, uh, often called 4G, which we'll talk about later in this video, this wireless connection could have a speed of, for example, 40 megabits per second or even higher. And in particular, 40 megabits per second is almost double the maximum rate achievable with ADSL2+. Plus. So the question is, well, why don't we use wireless for everything? Well, the answer is in this next diagram, and that is here we see many users all uh, connected to the same base station and sharing the capacity of that base station. So the example I gave earlier, for example, a base station with 40 megabits per second capacity, the more users who come in range of that base station, the less capacity that each of them get, because it has to be shared around. So the idea with wireless broadband is the capacity of a base station is shared. Okay, and hence it has nowhere near the capacity, for example, of the fiber broadband infrastructure which the NBN is rolling out. Uh, now another characteristic of uh, wireless broadband or mobile broadband, indeed mobile networks in general, is shown in this next diagram here. And here we have, again, a base station. And this time we have two users, one close to the base station, the other further away. And as you move further away from the base station, the radio signal which you receive uh, becomes weaker, and hence the data rate decreases. So a common characteristic or a key characteristic, characteristic of wireless broadband is that the data rate which you receive depends on how close you are to the base station. Now, another characteristic which I'll mention about uh, wireless broadband before we look at the NBN services is the fact that it runs over a radio channel. And radio channels have different width. Sometimes the width of the radio channel is called the amount of spectrum. And in broad terms, the wider the spectrum, or the wider the radio channel, the greater the capacity of the wireless broadband system which runs on it. Okay, and we'll see that this applies to the NBN wireless broadband, which we will now look at. Now, uh, many of you will be aware that Telstra introduced a new mobile broadband service last year, a wireless broadband service called 4G. And uh, in fact, uh, 4G uses a technology called long-term evolution or LTE. Uh, it's been rolled out around the world. It's used by Telstra in their 4G network. And as we'll see, it's all, all also used by the NBN. Now, one of the things you may say, look, if Telstra has rolled out a 4G network, why does the NBN have to do it as well? Hasn't it already been done? Well, the answer is that the 
in the end, 4G wireless broadband network is very different to the Telstra one. And in particular, there are three key differences, and I'll outline them now. Firstly, uh, the NBN wireless broadband service is called a fixed wireless broadband. And what that means is that an antenna about the size of a rectangular dinner plate is attached to your house by a technician when the NBN service is, in, is installed and hence provides a stronger radio signal than you would get from a handheld uh, device. Stronger radio signal means um, a higher data rate. Secondly, uh, the NBN Co., the NBN company, purchased uh, a large amount of radio spectrum or a large radio channel to run their 4G, fourth generation wireless broadband service in. And in particular, NBN Co. have a radio channel which is eight times the size of the radio channel which Telstra is using for their uh, 4G wireless broadband service. And thirdly, the type of LTE fourth generation or 4G technology which the NBN is using is different to the Telstra one. The NBN one is called Time Division Duplex. And what that means is that it's a technology specifically designed for wireless broadband. And in particular, this TDD or Time Division Duplex technology is able to split up the capacity of the radio channel so that much more capacity, for example, is given on the downlink than is provided on the uplink. And if you think about it, this is the way that wireless, that broadband services generally work. You have a much greater capacity on the downlink than you do on the uplink. And so the version of the 4G technology, which NBN Co is using, called Time Division Duplex, is better suited to wireless broadband. And indeed, the Telstra 4G network, I mean, it's a, an excellent network, is designed um, for mobile broadband, where people move around, whereas the NBN network is a fixed network. It's designed for houses where they have a fixed service. Now, if you're on or expecting the NBN wireless broadband service, the good news is, is that the rollout will be completed by 2015, which means that you'll be receiving the service uh, in many cases, long before uh, people re will receive an NBN fiber service because the fiber rollout will take longer. Now, with the NBN wireless service, the initial wireless broadband service, which some of you may have already, has a uh, downlink peak rate of 1 megabits per second, uh, so a downlink peak rate of 12 megabits per second, a one link, a uplink peak rate of one megabits per second. And because of the way that the NBN wireless network has been dimensioned, the amount of backhaul capacity which has been provided, NBN Co are using uh, microwave links for the backhaul, then the service which results, the NBN wireless service, will be similar to a current good quality ADSL 2 plus fixed line broadband, which many of us have and many of us are familiar with. However, there is a technology upgrade called LTE Advanced, which is now being incorporated by equipment manufacturers. NBN Co. Uh, may be introducing LTE Advanced technology into their wireless broadband network in 2013. And the LTE Advanced essentially increases the capacity or the speed of the wireless broadband network. And in particular, it may allow services, for example, with a 25 megabits per second peak downlink, a 10 megabits per second peak uplink. Now, this service in particular has an uplink speed, maximum uplink speed, which is 10 times the maximum uplink speed of ADSL2+, which is only 1 megabits per second. So, the in short, if you're expecting or already have an NBN wireless broadband service, then it is a pretty decent service because of the technology which it's using and the capacity which NBN Co have for it. Okay. In the next video, I'll be looking at the NBN satellite broadband service. I'll see you then.